Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of the Catfish Farm Enterprise live stream. So today we are live here and we are, we are going to be discussing on the topic on the high cost of feed and how the locally produced feed has been mitigating or has been helping to solve the challenge of the high cost of feed that we've experienced. A lot of farmers have also experienced this. So, and also we are going to be having a guest that is going to be joining us in the live stream today, which is the person of Belinda. Okay, hello, good evening. Yes, good evening. Hi, Kenneth. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much for so having me. Sure. Yeah, we are live now in the uh, studio. So I'm going okay. to tell the guests about the topic we are going to be discussing today. Now, okay. as a catfish farmer, it's not new to anyone about the high cost of feed. Now, if you mm. meet any catfish farmer today, the first complaint, the person lays down to you that, Wow, the, the feed prices are increasing. Like I, I, I can say, like some some of the products as of 2018, 2017, the prices are almost double what they buy now in the market, as well as for the foreign feed and some of the feed produced here in Nigeria, and that has short changed most of the farmers. Now you know before you the people will say the business is a lucrative firm. Here, if you come into it, you are going to get a certain percent of ROIO of your, your return of investment. But now with the high cost of feeding, people are asking, can I be able to meet up in terms of getting back the money I, I spent on feeding, getting back my money on staffing and other logistics yeah. to run the farm? And will there be profit for me as a catfish farmer? So that's the questions a lot of persons have in their mind. So today, the topic is going to be addressing that. So before we proceed, I want you to introduce yourself, who is Belinda Day? What is she into? And so the guests know, a lot of people already know you, but for those that might be seeing you for the first time, so you're welcome once again to the live stream. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you for having me on the show. Um, thank you, Kenneth. I see all that you're doing. It's really, really amazing. And uh, you're really doing a lot for the industry, for aquaculture on its own. Um, Hello viewers, um, this is Belinda here. My name is Belinda, uh, Belinda Clifford. Uh, people popularly know me as Belinda Bin Belly. Yeah, most people call me Belly. That's like um, a shortcut of the name Belinda. So I happen, yeah. So I happen to be um, someone who loves aquaculture very well. And uh, I also happen to be a farmer, a fish farmer at that. I am the CEO founder of the fish feed line called Apple Girl Fish Feed. And uh, so far, so good. Uh, I've been able to work in certain uh, organizational factors in Nigeria. And, and along the line, I dropped off and I started this farming of a thing, which has been my passion for a very, very long time. So it's been an amazing venture, uh, being a fish farmer, and at the same time, being able to you know, satisfy one of the needs, one of the basic needs and basic challenge that every other fish farmer has. So that's just basically me. Belinda Bimbeli, the fish feed uh, expert. Yeah, so thank you for joining us in the live stream. I know uh, the life of a farmer is a 24 hours schedule. In the farming, in the farming business, there is no weekends because the fishes don't care if it's a Saturday, if it's a Sunday, they want to be eating, they want to be taken care of. So the, the, the yeah. whole schedule is tied to a farmer. So coming down to the live stream is a sacrifice that most farmers, is, as in some of them, like the time and other schedules, other the appointments and the rest. So it's been an awesome one having you on the live stream. And I know I've seen a lot of work you do in the aquaculture industry, from the feed production and some of other activities is done. So and it's a great one to have you. I know the viewers are going to learn more from what you have in store for us this evening. So we'll have to proceed quickly into the topic for the day. Now, like I said, the topic is the high cost of feed. Now, then how locally produced feed has been solving the nutritional needs of farmers. So I want you to speak more on that. Then also, you know, there is, you know when you talk about locally produced feed, there is this 
mindset people have about when they say locally produced, it is they just have this inferiority mentality that ah, since it's locally produced, it should be inferior compared to the other kinds of seed. So I want you to talk in that line also. So you have the floor. Okay, so um, basically, uh, everybody knows that uh, for a farmer, especially for a fish farmer, one of the basic challenges that any farmer has is on the aspect of feeding. Though there are other challenges as well in Nigeria, like we have the issues of electricity, which is not very stable, and we have to rely on other sources of power, you know, and uh, the challenges of being able to stock good seeds for a farmer, that's another challenge. And then maybe poor water management due to the uh, inability for one to get adequate electricity. Then we also have the workforce because, of course, as a farmer, you have this farm outlet out there. There's no way you, you'll be the one to run it 100%. You got, you're going to have to rely on most other individuals who you're going Absolutely. to employ. Yeah. Yeah. But then, among all these challenges that a farmer faces or has, the most major challenge that any fish farm or any farmer will have in terms of fish farming is the feed. Yes, the reason because of that is because fish feeding takes almost like between 70 to 80% yeah. of any farm production cycle. And you and I will agree that, of course, if you, it's not just about stocking the numbers. Like some people will just come and they'll stock 1,000, they'll stock 2,000, they'll stock 20,000, 30,000. Most times when you consider the cost at which you're using to buy this, these fingerlings or your juveniles, you you understand that they're not really much. Like if you're stocking a fingerlings of 5,000, I mean, the money is not really more. You just feel like, oh, is it not just 5,000? It's just that. But, and even the cost of feeding for a starter food, you know, it's like you're not really going to spend much for them at the initial starting. But then sometime along the line, you just see your bank account dropping, dropping, dropping. And oh, you feel like, what? <laughs> yeah, and you feel like, what is happening? Yeah. Basically, nothing much is happening. The only thing happening is that you're trying to protect your livestock and you're trying to protect your livestock by giving them feeding. And not just feeding, you're giving, by giving them adequate feeding. Now, over time, what we've been able to notice in the industry, like if you've been in the industry for a very, very long time, like five, 10 years ago, you will understand that the cost of feeding that we have right now, I mean, the cost at which we buy fish feed now is not the cost at which we used to buy it before. I mean, the price has so much skyrocketed that it has put off a lot of farmers, you know, out of the farming business. Now, the question is, for how long is it going to continue? Because it is a very big major challenge for the aquaculture industry at large. And last year, year before last, last, last year, you noted that there is this trend of increment in the cost of fish feed. Like yeah. it's been simultaneous, very, very simultaneous. And uh, I do not see any break in it especially with the very uh, popular fish fees that we know. I mean, those of them that are very, very popular in the market out there, they keep okay. increasing and increasing, and we don't see it going down anytime soon. Of course, we, we know what happens in the country. Nothing really goes up and comes yeah. down. You know, Everything that goes up and comes down. down. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, so it either remains at that position or it keeps increasing. And that is where, you know, the, 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 the challenge, the major challenge of any farmer boils down to, because of course, how are you going to be able to keep up with this trend? It's like you're stocking 5,000 fishes or you're stocking 10,000 fishes and you already did your mathematics and you'll be like, okay, for 5,000 fishes, I am going to spend like, I'm just doing a rough estimate. I'm going to spend like 5 million naira to train them. But then sometime along the line, you now discover that, you know, from your own budget, you budgeted 5 million naira, but along the line, the cost of fish fees keep increasing. So you see that at the end of your production cycle, you are not going to you know, spend 5 million naira again. You either see yourself spending 6 million or 7 million or 8 million as the case may be. So this is a very big, big, big major challenge in the aquaculture industry. And that is why uh, so many uh, feed lines, so many brands like the local fish feed brands has been able to come up, you know, wow. just like the aquaculture fish feed, that's, you know, we all know, yeah. That is what actually uh, prompted my desire to go into fish feed production because one, one thing is just about, you know, doing uh, your farming. Another thing is the feeding aspect of it. So, farm, yeah. yeah, so that's what actually gave rise to the brand, the Aquabell Fish Feed brand, and it's been doing well, it's been going amazing. 
and uh, we've been able to satisfy a lot of farmers, which is a very, very good thing in the industry. It's true that we're not yet still able to meet up with every other, uh, with so many people's demands and all the rest of it, due to, of course, uh, maybe uh, distance and other factors, you know. But then the good thing is that for the farmers who've, who've used our products and who know our product, they've been able to get a certain kind of satisfaction from using the Aquaba Fish Feed brand and uh, from being able to also achieve something at the long run. Because when you check the cost of local feed, Aquaba Fish Feed is not the only local feed in the market. There are so many other local feeds in the market, yes, um, which I will talk about. I think that there's the cram feed, there's the product feed, uh, there are so many of them out there. Like, there are so many of them out there, and I think they're all doing. They're all doing amazing, at least to their own uh, best knowledge. Everybody is trying to, you know, keep up the pace because it's one thing is to create a brand, another thing is to create a brand that, you know, that actually uh, fulfills a mark or that, you know, buttresses down on the point that is being presented out there. So normally, for any farmer. Uh, the thing is this, the cost of fish feed will keep on going high and it's become a very big major challenge in the industry, but there's really, really nothing any farmer can do about that. There's nothing I can do about it. it do, it's not just about the production of the fish feed or the, there is also the cost of the raw materials. We all know what's yeah. happening in the country due to insecurity and other factors. Insecurity, one major factor in the country has pulled out a lot of farmers from, you know, from farming business and uh, we have like limited farmers right now in Nigeria. And the most times, most of our raw materials used to come from outside the country. But I think as of recent, there's this ban on the importation of fish uh, of raw materials. So it's like we have to solely depend on what we crop out to be able to. And uh, of course, you know, we have the big players in the industry, like the very big players in the industry, you know them. Okay, like yeah. fish like Blue Crown, Blue Crown uh, like yeah. Coffee and all the rest right, of it. Right. They're like very big. Yeah, they're like very big players and, uh, you know, these people have the money to play and, you know, sometimes it's even difficult for we, the local producers, you know. Yeah, so don't, don't get me wrong, they're also local producers, but you know what I mean by when I say local, yes. like small, small people like us are just coming up in the, in the, in the fit sector. Okay, so sometimes the, the issues of raw materials become a very big challenge in production, and uh, you know, sometimes it buttresses down on a lot of factors, and then the farmer. That this is where the farmer needs to make a very optimum choice in the kind of feeding that uh, he or she gives to the farm. Because then we know, we all know that there are very regular good feeds in the market. Yeah. Uh, like I mentioned, there's the blue crown, there's the top feed, and there's a lot other of them. Then we also have the very sp uh, special mighty starter feeds, which comes from outside Nigeria. I call them special mighty because. Variably, I don't think there's any farmer in Nigeria that can do without them. I mean, this is very special, mighty starter fits. Yeah. yeah, like you have the Ziegler, the Scratching, and not the rest. Coupons, thank you, Allah Aqua. They are very special, mighty. So if, if a farmer gets to use them and then comes down to using the, the likes of Blue Crown and Tuff, you know, the rest of them. But you as a farmer, you have to understand that if you continue using most of all this uh, regular feeds. Sometimes it will be very difficult for you to break even. Sure. Sometimes it will be very difficult for you to make a certain profit. And of course, I, we understand we all have passion for farming. That's why we're in the farming business. But what is the essence of you know investing your time, your resources, and everything, and you're not making anything out of it? It doesn't yeah. really make any. Yeah, like someone said, a quote that hunger keeps passion. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so if, uh, yeah if no matter the passion you have, if you are hungry, the passion will die because if the, the hunger alone sure. will just kill down the passion you have for the business. So before you proceed, yeah. I would want to uh, ask a question. And now you made mention of some big brands we have here in Nigeria, like we know about the blue crown feed. Now, anybody that is into the farm business, no matter the location you are in Nigeria, you've heard about blue crown. Yeah. I've been to Lagos, Ibadan, different areas and, and different farms. And I've seen that, yes, once you go to the farm, you know that they have used blue crown or they know about the blue crown feed. Also, we know about the vital feed, we know about the top feed and the rest. Now, these feeds are produced here in Nigeria. And the, the, like the one you mentioned, the crown feed, the aqua bear feed, the broody feeds. So different feeds also they produce here in Nigeria. Now, what they call some the locally produced feed, and 
when it comes to the feed like the blue crown and the, the, it, it seems that they don't also call them the locally produced feed, but all these feed are produced here in Nigeria. So can you just tell like what's the difference between these big players and the one they produce from the small scale farmers? Since all are locally produced, so what are the difference in both of these the feeds? Okay. <clears throat> Uh, thank you for that beautiful question. You know, so many people come to wonder, like, sometimes when they call local feed, they, they, they have this mindset that local feed attributes a particular kind of feed. Blue, yeah. blue crown is also a locally produced feed in Nigeria. Yeah. Top feed is locally produced feed in Nigeria. But then, like I, like I said earlier, I said they are the big players. Like, yeah. they are, honestly, there are some, there are people, there are brands that I personally, I look up to them. I yeah. look up to being being like blue crown in the future. Now, the, the, the difference between a feed like blue crown or top feed, uh, the, the difference between a feed like blue crown and the difference between probably like aqua bell feed is, is kind of a little bit high and uh, is, is a little bit large. This is the, the reason. Okay, a company like blue, blue crown, one, they have the resources, they have the staff, they have the, uh, the equipment. Normally the equipment, I, I know the, the equipment the Blue Crown company uses is not the same company. It's not the same equipment a, a company like mine will use. Yeah, I mean, when I talk about yeah, I mean, the, and, uh, the yeah. extruder machines that they are using, you know, I've, I've been able to make inquiries about that. And, and I know they cost like thousands, thousands, thousands of dollars. You understand yeah. what I mean? Like if, you, yeah. if you have to convert it in like Nigerian currency, you'll be talking about a hundred million plus. Yeah. We're not talking about, just, we're talking about just machines. And uh, we've not even gone to talk about the staff and every other thing that they have on, on play displayed for them. That, that doesn't mean other fees are not good. Don't get me wrong. We have other, so many other good uh, local fees out there. Okay. So the only difference is that when, when they use all these very high sophisticated machines to produce this face, it looks just like a regular foreign feed. Foreign feed. Do you understand? Yes, it looks just like a regular foreign feed. That's different, and uh, of course, like I told you, they have lots of money to, to play with. So they get to like have access to their raw materials at every point of time. They are not like people that will go and buy 10 tons. Somebody like me will go and buy 10 tons, I'll go and buy 50 tons of uh, raw materials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I mean. They're not buying that quantity. They're buying metric it, tons. They're buying real loads. Not trailer really load even. They are buying metric tons. They are buying metric tons. Like they are closing down the whole of the the, the, the north with their order. I mean, you know, it's, it's like it's very very difficult to, to keep up with them in competition. But then we're gonna try because the truth of the matter is that the sky is very wide out there for even local wow. producers. There are lots of fish farmers in Nigeria, and of course, the feed industry is something that is is, is coming up, is upcoming, and is booming. You know, I love what a lot of farmers out there are doing. They're trying to incorporate this. Most farmers are making their own fish feed, and of course, they're also buying regular feed, you know. So it doesn't mean that the farmers who are making their own fish feed in their own farm, it doesn't mean they're not making profit. The end point is to know what you're doing. That's the end point. Like, having a very good knowledge about animal nutrition will help you to have, you know, the vital knowledge and information you need to be able to produce your fish feed. Because at the long run, when you throw your feed inside the water, the feed is not gonna ask you if it's a blue crown or if it's an aqua bell feed or if it's a top feed. What matters is for them to eat it. So if it's something that's very pal palatable to their taste, of course they're gonna eat it. And if it's something that is being properly produced with the right ingredients and materials, of course it's going to work very well on the system. So what matters now is not just buying this or buying that. What matters basically is what you're buying and what are you formulating like most people don't also know that you know there are certain materials that you don't need to use to make a fish feed you understand yeah. due to the fact that fishes are not like chickens chicken can actually eat anything you present to them the only thing is that they might not really grow they might not really have weight the way you want it to have weight but fish is not like that there are some things you throw into the water and your fish will reject it for you so having adequate in-depth knowledge about catfish nutrition is highly, highly, highly needed for anyone to succeed in the feed making industry. Okay. So that yeah. is just it. like, uh, we have so many raw materials we use for the production of fish feeds. Like we have the soya meat, we have the GNC, we have cassava, uh, we have meat, we have maize, and uh, we have maize gluten. Making this fish feed is another thing. Knowing the, uh, the nutritional requirements that these fish feeds have 
is another beautiful thing. Like most people are making fish feed, they don't even know the nutritional requirements of the, each particular in, uh, ingredients that they are using. Okay, so which is which is which is not really good. That's why you see most time they make this fish. Some people even couple this fish in their farm and they'll tell you, ah, their fish is not doing well. It doesn't mean their fish will not do well if they miss the right materials or the right ingredients, but they don't even know what to mix and when to mix it. It's just like somebody will not come and use add GNC in their feed. GNC is very, very good. It has a crude protein of 45%. It has an energy content of 2,540. And it has fat percent of six, uh, it has the fat content of about 6%. That's for GNC. But most people don't know that there's a very big anti-nutrition in GNC. And even when you're adding it to your fish, fish meal, you're using it, I mean, you're using it to produce your fish feed. There's a certain quantity that you need to add you know, so that you don't end up automatically destroying the, the feed that you're producing. So many farmers out there don't know this. So many producers as well, maybe local feed producers don't. So many people don't know this. So it's like they use this GNC to make their feed and they feel, oh, GNC does a protein of about 45% and they add it in their feed. But along the line, they, they are feeding these fishes and it's not really giving them what they want. They will just be thinking, why is it that my fishes are not growing? What am I doing wrong? Then maybe they'll go and buy another feed and they'll start feeding that they start seeing difference. And they don't know that that is actually from their own formulation. Okay, so that's just uh, basically how it is. And another thing is the soya meal. Wow, soya meal is, another, is a very fantastic, uh, fantastic uh, nutritional requirement for the, for the making of fish feed. But then when you say soya, some people just hear soya and they'll be like, oh, okay, soya. Let me just go and get soya. There are so many processes if a soya bean has to undergo for you to even incorporate it in your fish feed. Yeah. You understand? Like even in the aspect of fish, uh, fish production with that soya is involved, we have the full fat soya, we have the less fat soya, and we have the soya meal solvent. Of course, even when you hear the name less fat soya, it should tell you, oh, this is less fat. We mean it contains less, lesser fats in it. You cannot compare that to a full fat soya. Now, it, it now butters down on someone who knows a very good deal about animal nutrition to know that, okay, wow, if I have to produce my feed, I need to use a soya meal. Maybe a soya meal solvent or a full fat soya because they are more richer in whatever it is that you're looking to get achieving your feed. Like a soya meal solvent contains about 44% crude proteins and has an energy level of about 2,700 calories and a fat of about 3.5%. So basically, when you use it in your, in your feeding, you're going to get very good, amazing results. And of course, some people as well, when you calculate the cost of what they're using in their feeding, it it's comes up very, 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 very high because they're not most times using the, the right raw materials. They're using very expensive things. That's why somebody like Aquabell Fish Feed will incorporate maize gluten in our feed. Some people don't know what maize gluten is. Maize gluten alone has a crude protein of about 60% which means it can, to an extent, replace your regular fish meal. But then, you're not going to say because you're using a, a mixed gluten, you're not going to add fish meal. Of course, you say add, add fish meal because fish meal has a crude protein of 65%. It also has an energy level of 2,860 calories with a fat, fat content of 4.50%. You understand? So having in-depth knowledge about fish and animal nutrition will help you to produce a quality fish feed that's when people you know get to use your products or when people uh, when farmers get to use your product or you make those that feed for yourself it will go a long way you know to give maximum results to your livestock or to your fish and you smile all the way to the bank okay before you um, proceed like you know what they asked now they like we've all known that all the feeds right ranging from blue crown down to viper the top feed the uh, echo float, all the feeds, aqua boom, aqua bell feeds, crowns are all called locally produced feed. You no, know, because mm -hmm. that's the inspiration a lot of persons find themselves. You see them, ah, you ask you a question, is locally produced feed good to feed my fishes? And when you ask them, what is locally produced feed? Now they just feed that maybe the one that someone I know is producing. That's the one they call the locally produced feed. And they range the blue crown and others as not locally produced. And also, you talked about the machine used in production. Now, in mm. terms of the uh, Blue Crown and some of these big boys or the big factories, now their machines might give the, the feed a nice cut. Now, if you're in the industry, you know that there's a feed. Once you take two different feeds, you see that the shapes of some of the feeds look a bit different from some of the feeds. 
in terms of the cutting and the size. Yeah, some feet, they are 4 mm, looks a bit like 6 mm because it was not well cut properly. But the, yeah. the major thing, as we said, is about the material contents of the feed, not just the machines. How you formulate the feed matters a lot. It is unfair because once you throw the feed inside the water, the fish does not know the exact company that this feed is coming from. What they know is it palatable for me and I will eat the feed. Now, from our topic you're looking at, is the locally produced feed solving the nutritional need? Because one, the fishes, yes, there is a requirement needed for at each size or each stages of these fishes as they tend to grow. Now, let's say the fishes that are taking the two mm, you can't compare the formulation with the one of the six mm, you can't compare it with that of the nine mm. They should be they should have different variations because of the different sizes it's been applied to. So the question yeah. is, is this feed that is being produced locally from the different uh, locally produced farmers, does it have the same nutritional content as compared to maybe other feeds, let's say the big boys and the industry? Is their content the same? Mm, well, like I told you, uh, fish feed uh, production doesn't buttress than on just one material. Yeah. There are so many materials that are, that are used to produce uh, fish feed. Yeah. Production of fish feed or production of the getting of the raw material depends on the availability of what you have raw close to you. Yeah. In your, yes, in your location. So um, basically, if you, okay, let me use uh, for instance, uh, there's this a blue crown two mm feed. Like I told you, the, the machine that they're using is, is like is very amazing. Like if I can have that machine, God, I don't overblow with that. You understand what I mean? Okay. So what that means is that the, the, the machines that we use, like the, the local machines that we use for our own production, cannot give you a 2 mm. It cannot give you an exact 2 mm cut. Yeah. Now, when yes, it cannot give you an exact 2 mm cut. That doesn't mean we a local producer cannot make a 2 mm feed because the difference in the variation of their mms comes with uh with their protein level and their energy level and of course their fat level so if you're able to calculate and get the correct uh fat level or the correct energy level or the correct uh crude protein level of any raw materials then you can be able to make even a 2 mm feed but the difference is that a blue crown feed or a top fit feed uh you know might be smaller in size it will be yeah. very very smaller in size compared to you who is not using that kind of sophisticated it's machine of so it's, it's all about the size not really the, the quality now the yeah. quality most of the times are the same especially if you're using a product a, I mean, a local feed that the producer knows what he or she is doing yeah. because i also tend to understand that there are lots in the market and the uh, I don't know how, how some people formulate their own. Well, I'm not going to talk about that. But then, if it's a good, very well formulated local fish feed, when you use it on your livestock, it's going to give amazing results to your fishes. That doesn't mean it's different from a blue crown or a top feed. 90% yeah. of the time, it boils, it boils down on the machine they are using. And uh, the yes, the machine they are using, another factor is like they have more, more workers more available resources, um, you know, a more conducive environment yeah. for, their, for their workers. And, you know, there are so many other, there are so many factors that they have that possibly a local feed, a, a local local feed, because they're also local feed, a local local feed producer might not have. That doesn't mean the product, the other person's product is not good. No, that's not what it means. But I'll give it to the big players because they're doing an amazing job, you know, Producing this feed is not is not uh, is not a funny thing. It's not uh, it's not a child's play. To be honest, very honest, with you, like you go in almost every feed shop in Nigeria and you see a, a product like Blue Crown. Wow, I give it to them because I mean I produce a couple of fish feed and I know the kind of even the demands the orders that we get most times are not even able to sometimes satisfy our customers demand even though we try as much as possible to do that if you understand what i mean by that yeah. so it's like what they like blue crown you keep going to store you keep seeing them wow like honestly they are doing an amazing job you know they are really really doing an amazing job and as someone who is upcoming in the industry in the fish sector industry i will give it to them like Honestly, I expect to see myself in the next five, ten years to be just like Blue Crown. Yeah, so uh, uh, in the next five years, we'll be seeing you being the big player in the feed industry. So, like you said, okay. that in terms of the 
the quality is the same. Now, because what people want to see about the feed people's production is the quality. Now, if, there's a quality, if, if the feed has good quality, once the fish eat it, it, it reflects in their body. Because mm. in the feed business, in the aquaculture business, you know that the feed, feeding is very important. Like you said, almost 90% of your money goes down to feeding. So and it's, it's an important aspect in the whole catfish business. Now, getting fingerlings, so if it's 100,000, you can stock your whole pond with fingerlings, just 100,000. But now, in terms of feeding those fishes, it takes a lot. Now, to feed like a thousand fishes, it's close to 57 bars. This is, if you have at the rate of 10,000 per bar, it's almost 600 or something thousand naira to just feed a thousand fishes. So, the, the price is high as compared to what people spend before to feed them. So, that means this is an important aspect here. Yeah? A lot of persons, if you get it wrong, you might not get back your money you've been used in stocking the pond and feeding them. So, if you get it wrong in terms of the feeding, now, also, also proceed. Now, the fish feed business, if, as you know today, is expanding on a daily basis. Now, there is yeah. on, on a daily basis, new persons coming into the industry. Questions are, I want to start. How will I start? I'm, I want to start a business. So, you know that it's a business that is growing. It's a business that if you, if you since you are producing feed in this business, there is always a ready available customer. You're not looking for a client to, to sell feed. It's now, can you meet up the demand that they are calling you for in the business? So I want to say, what's the way forward in terms of the feed production? Because most persons want to go into the business, but the fact, the deterrent factor has been on the area of feeding. Yeah, the other area, maybe pond construction, is done once. Once you construct your pond, you are, you are over with that. The staffing, the power might not be really of an issue. But when it comes to the feeding, you spend on feeding at every cycle. If you are stocking 10,000, once you feed the 10,000 to maybe table size, depending on how you want to sell, the next 10,000 you are stocking, you are also feeding the same amount of feed you just used in the last cycle. So what's the way forward in terms of farmers that want to go into the business? What will be your advice in terms of when it comes to feeding their fishes? Today, some people ask the question, should I go for foreign feed or should I go for the locally feed? So what will be your Maybe advice to people coming to the business that have this fear about the high cost of feed. Oh, okay. Um, fish food production is a very amazing uh, venture. It's very, very amazing. It is one. It it makes you to you know to have this fulfillment. Personally, it makes me to have this fulfillment that I'm able to satisfy lots of people across the aquaculture industry and uh, it opens also doors many doors for lots of opportunities that's one and uh, for internet uh, farmers who want to start fish farming or even people who are already in fish farming and they're having issues with uh trying to you know be able to make these feeds or trying to get quality fish feed my advice to them is um, they shouldn't be in a hurry because of course you know Rome was not built in a day. They should take it one step at a time. If you have interest to go into fish feed formulation, you need to have very in-depth knowledge about animal nutrition. You have to have very big knowledge about making fish feed, you know, even making chicken feed. Like if you can make fish feed, of course, to a considerable extent, you might be able to be able to, you know, conquer something that your chicks can eat comfortably. So what I want to say to them is that they should take it one step at a time. There are lots of uh, amazing opportunities online where you can learn a lot about animal nutrition, like if you come on YouTube right now, what you and so many other guys out there are doing is amazing. You know, there's a lot of courses that people can take in online and be able to have a little bit knowledge about animal nutrition or about catfish feeding. Then apart from that, if you if they intend to go commercial, because I will not ever advise someone who is going commercial to not have very good knowledge about animal nutrition. If they intend to go commercial and probably venture into what I am doing, I would say they should take a course in animal nutrition, probably an online course or whatever it is, but it should be from a high institution, you know, and it should be highly, highly, highly better than on animal feeding animal nutrition and other things. Then for those of them who just want to produce just for their farm, it is very good because even when you make this fish face in your farm, you're cutting down the cost of feeding by almost 
50 to 60 percent that that costs you know you're reducing that cost for yourself so it's like when you remove the cost of 50 60 percent of production you know that your profit you add that cost to it and it will increase your profit for you so it's a good thing what they have to do is you know like take uh, one or two courses on animal nutrition or on fish feeding they can learn one or two things then they'll ask questions because learning is one thing asking questions you need to ask from people who are already in it people who are already doing it then they need to get the necessary machines that are that is being used to do this because for you to be able to make this fish you need a machine to be especially when you're making a fish feed is that you're using a sinking feed machine which is a pelletizer or you're using uh, a floating feed machine which is an extruder and most of the time these machines are very 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 technical especially when you're using an extruder machine if you're not careful you're gonna get super duper frustrated that you'll be like oh god i give up on this so one thing is about getting the machines another thing is getting an expert or a technician who is going to you know teach 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 on teach the, the farmer the farm hands yeah on on how to produce and of course how to make quality fish feed. Then another very big, mighty challenge they will have is in the sourcing of raw materials. That's a very another very big challenge because uh, I would say 80% of the time, if you want to get bulky raw materials, most times it comes from our northern brothers, which is very, very good and nice. I love what they're doing for, for Nigeria at large. You know, they're like the feed basket or the food basket yeah, of the nation. Exactly. So most times you have to source your raw materials from the north. And honestly, it is not. It is not an easy venture. It is not. In fact, it's a very difficult task because most times you're here and you're not there, you know. And you don't even know what you're doing, what they're doing over there and all the rest. All you know is that you're getting your raw materials and they're coming. But then buying raw materials is one thing. Now, buying quality raw materials is another thing because... Most people, you know, most people are not being very honest. They're not being very yeah. straightforward. If you don't have a good supplier, they might supply you substandard raw materials. And, you know, most times before these things even come to you, you've already made payment for them. So it's like you're getting something. And sometimes, you know, like a novice farmer might not even know. Someone who is very new in production will not even know that the, the soya meal he or she is getting is not a grade A. It's like a grade B, grade C. So yeah, meal, and the person will not even know. You know, some people they'll be like they're getting fish meal. Ah, this fish it smells like fish. It looks like fish. Yeah, we all know it's fish. It smells like fish. It looks like fish. It's a fish meal. But what kind of fish is it? We all know that fish meal has a crude protein of sixty-five percent. But it's not every fish that have that crude protein of sixty-five percent. There are certain fishes that have that crude protein. There are fishes that have crude protein of forty percent, forty-five percent. It's just like in the uh, in the production of fish. You need a very high protein to be able to give to your catfish for them to do well. This, the amount of protein you need to give to catfish is not the same amount of protein you need to give to a tilapia fish for it to do well. But they're all fish, right? Yeah. yeah. So having in-depth knowledge about even your fish meal, what it gives you, the, the quality of the fish meal you're getting, the blood meal you're getting, what is the source? Some people just go to the abattoir and they just buy blood and come and cook, cook, cook. Yeah, it is blood meal. But is it is it really serving the nutritional, you know, the nutritional quantity you want it, you want it to serve? Most time, it might not really be serving that need. You might just end up killing everything in the blood, and that's the end of it. So in your mind, you feel like you're giving them blood meal, but you don't know that you've cooked every nutrient, everything in it to be completely dead. So that is why they need to have very good in-depth knowledge about animal nutrition and also get quality, uh, qualified. Uh, feed ingredient supplier who can be able to, you know, get them these ingredients at a good price and, of course, get them value for their money. I mean, value for what they're paying for. They're paying for a grade A fish meal and they're getting a grade A fish meal. Okay. So, thank you very much. Now, if some people have dropped their questions on the comment section, so if you're online and you want to maybe have a question you want to ask, you can see send it and would have fine time to take the questions as we proceed in the live stream. So you can just send your questions and we'll have to take the questions live. So before we go now, now you made mentions of using the extruder and using the pelletizers and you talked about the sinking feed and also the floating feed. Now there is mm. this also que present questions most persons ask. To ask you the sinking and the floating, which one is the best kind of feed? I know maybe you've come across such questions along the line. People ask you, 
it's, it's sinking better than the floating feed. It's floating better than the sinking feed. Now, from a producer, now, someone might just, you know, if someone that is not in the line of production might just give a general advice based on the sinking and the floating. Now, for the producer's aspect in terms of nutrition, is there a difference in the quality in terms of, okay, the ingredients that they add in the sinking, is it different from what they add in the floating, or is there a difference between both of the feed? Mm, normally, uh, for you to achieve floating in any feed, there are certain materials, there are certain ingredients you need to use. Yeah. But then some people will still come and claim and tell you that they are a sugar machine um, mechanics or they produce a sugar machine and there's a certain kind of machine they will give you and uh, it's going to give you 100% floating and you use whatever material you use on it and it will give you floating. I don't believe that because I've been in this feed industry for two years plus. I mean, I don't mean in aquaculture, I mean in the feed industry for two years plus and I've been opportuned to use several, several machines. I've used the pelletizer machine of different categories, different production capacity, and I've also used uh, a extruder machine of different, different capacitors. You understand? And I'm still getting yeah. more extruder machines because the, the, the rates of orders we have keep increasing on a daily basis. So of course, as orders keep coming, you have to keep getting this machine so that you can be able to meet up with the order. But the truth of the matter is that the extruder machine okay, um, needs a certain raw materials or needs a certain formulation for you to be able to achieve floating fish feed. So getting an extruder is one thing. Now knowing the, uh, the formula to use on the extruder to make your fish float is another thing. So it's not just getting an extruder, it's good. It's gonna give you good uh, nutritional fits, but then what formula are you using for it? If you don't know the formula to use, then you're, you're as good as using a sinking uh, machine, if you understand what I mean. Yeah. So, but in terms of the quality of the feed after production, once you want to apply it to the feed now, is the, I know the raw material, I mean, there, there are some difference in, in the raw material that make one floating and also make the, to get a sinking. But in terms of the quality of the feed after the final production, when you give it into the feed, which one is more preferred, or is both of them good to be applied to your fishes? They are, they are both they are both very very good to be applied to the fishing to the fishes <clears throat> to be given to the fishes. The only the only the only major difference is that an extruder machine tends to kill the anti nutrition in the raw materials that you're using to make your fish fit. Yeah. That's an extruder machine. But then if you we have different categories of pelletizer. If you are using a high capacity pelletizer machine, that's a high capacity sinking feed machine, it will also go it will also kill the anti-nutrition that you don't want your fishes to have a taste of. Then one thing is making this feed, another thing is drying them up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So you need to have adequate uh, drying capacity so that you you be able to preserve your feed for a long. I think a farmer should be more concerned about the drying of his feed, of the preservation of his feed, not really about whether they are sinking or whether they are floating, because to be on the honest side, both sinking machines, both sinking feet and floating feet, they are very very good. They are very 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 good. The only difference is if you're using a sinking feed. You need to know how to use it. Of course, on your fishes, you need to spot feed for them. You don't do broadcast yeah. feeding for them because if you do broadcast feeding for them, you end up wasting your feet. Yeah. But if you spot feed for them at a very particular pos uh, position at yes. almost every day, yeah, you will see that your fishes will do amazing, amazing. I, I still use local, uh, what do you call it? I still use pelletized yeah. feeds in my farm. You understand what I mean? Yes. Yeah. So, and my fishes are doing very, very amazing. And uh, it doesn't uh, make them not to grow. It still gives them very good weight and it still makes them to grow very, very well. So it all bothers than on what the farmer can afford because even the cost of getting a pelletizer machine is not the same cost of getting an extruder okay. machine. There are different, different costs. So, so they are both good so things. Okay, a quick one now. In terms of the cost, like you mentioned, for the sinking and the floating, which is more, well, I said the cost, less expensive in terms of cost of production for the sinking or the floating? Mm, I think making a, a floating feed is more expensive. Okay, it's more expensive to make a floating feed, uh, to make a floating feed, because 
like I said, there are certain materials you have to use to achieve floating in a feed. Now, most of those materials are not cheap. They are not cheap. And sometimes it's something that you don't get on a regular so, so it's something that sometimes you have to buy like loads, loads, loads of tra trailer loads of them and stock in your farm, then you'll be taking from them and be doing your production. And the, the, the truth of the matter is that most times when you don't add the materials in your feed, your feed will not really give you good floating. It doesn't mean the feed is not good. Yeah, but it just means that maybe you're not adding the particular quantity of starch that you're supposed to add. So it's not really giving you that, that floating, that right floating that you want. Okay. okay, so we'll just take some of the few questions that have been dropped on the comment section before we proceed. Okay, someone, Samson, to your mask, Samson, let me just start with the Samson. He said, please, that, okay, please, is that a floating feed? Maybe he's talking about your own feed. Is it a floating feed or a sinking feed? Uh, the Aquabell Fish Feed brand is yeah. uh, a floating feed. Yeah, it's a floating fish feed. That's all okay. So we okay, these are the greetings. Hi all. Okay. This is from Kaba. Amadwa Kaba. You say I just take okay. I just take you on the road yeah. about feet. People are now trying to use Azola at BSF. What is your advice about that? He's talking about this uh, bio lab. My God. Yeah, maggot. Yeah. What's the advice on that? Yeah, uh, using maggot for fish feed production is very, very amazing. It's very, very good. It can be able to produce maggot on a large scale. It's not like you're, you know, to produce maggot is not even something that is easy. I mean, good maggots, maggot meat yeah. production. Yes. So if if you yeah. have knowledge on how to do that and you can get PSF flies to produce your own maggots and incorporate it in your feeding, it's very, very good. But then, it's not like you'll be only you only be giving maggot to your fishes. No, you also have to incorporate other things that you have to give, you know, to your fishes. As you mean, you want to use it to make fish feed. So it's a very good one. Maggot meal is very very good. BSF farming is good. I think farmers should try to do you know, go into that. Yeah, yeah. There, there have been a lot of work that have been done around the BSF farming area. Yeah, but you know, one thing is getting a good raw material, and also is getting it in large scale. Now, for a farmer that just wants to produce, maybe for a 1,000 capacity farm, you can produce the BSF and it will be easier. But for commercial purposes, it's getting it is, might not be that easy in terms of doing it commercial. Yeah, so that's majorly one of the challenges. I've seen a lot of peasant fish in terms of when they tend to go into the BSF farming. So it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a venture that's coming up gradually also around this area. So now, as the other producers, we we'll get more questions from the other persons. Now, like you said, the terms of the nutritional value, the locally produced feed, also serve to meet the need. Now, we want to look at, well, we're looking at high cost of feed. So we've talked about, yes, it has good nutrition when you get a, uh, adequate raw materials and you, you know what you are doing. Then what is the cost in terms of the general cost of the locally produced feed. So when I talk about the locally produced feed, the small, let's say the small scale uh, fish farm yeah. Uh, producers. Yeah, so in terms of the cost, so people want to know, okay, what are the costs? So you can use like the alcohol feed for an example. Okay, what are the costs of the feed compared to maybe the general cost people buy their feed and they now look at, okay, is there a difference within the cost of the feed? Uh, okay, for an um, aquabell fish feed, I think the least price of feed that we have is at uh, 6,500. And that's our 9 mm feed. Uh, our 6 mm feed is at 6,700. Our 4 mm feed is at 7,000 naira. And our 3 mm feed is at 7,500 naira. For now, that's the current price. And this price has been consistent for some very long time. Uh, and uh, there's been pressure. We've had certain pressures to push up the price, but yeah, you know what? When, when you say you, when you said for now, I was like, ah, is, is, are you changing the price tomorrow? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. For now, the price is just at that price for now because, of course, you, everybody knows what's happening in the country. Yes. There's increments of uh, petrol, yeah. which which 
which, which you know has affected lots of things in Nigeria, which so many industries, so many companies have increased their you know their productions, uh, pricing, and every all of it. But for a certain reason, for a certain reason, it also affected us the Aquabel Fish Feed brand. But then, then as the CEO, you know, what I, I, we do not want to just in, keep increasing these things. It, I, I think it's a cost that at the moment we can still bear, you know, because yeah. uh, the whole intent is yes. The whole intent is to get our fees across across so many farmers in Nigeria, and uh, not really, we're not really for now after the profit of it all. We are after satisfying a certain need that farmers do. So that is why we're not we're not in a hurry to increase our feed prices. We are leaving it as stagnant for now, even though the cost of transporting raw materials to our location is quite high. But well, to the glory of God, God has been merciful. Still find a way to be able to, you know, buttress down on those uh, challenging factors, and so far, so good. Yeah. So, for, so now, from the cost of the price you gave the nine mn six five and ranging to seven thousand uh, five for the three mn. Now, it's a good price compared to the other feed price currently now in the market. Yeah, because if you've gone through my my channel, what I do, I do most times I do like in the three months I'll do what I call a cost estimate analysis for some of the farmers. Let's say you want to do a 1,000 capacity farm. We know you spend 57 bags to feed them if you want to take all the 1,000 to table size. Yeah, if that's mm -hmm. your target, so it's 57 bags to feed them. Now, with the current, like the, there's a video I did, then feed was around 5,400 as of then. Currently, now with the current price of feed, you can, the least you can get from the big players is around 9,000 something for the blue crown and so so compared to the price our web feed is giving is a bit very fair for the farmers currently now because the farmers are the one bearing the whole cost of all the whole struggle because let's say for example the cost of the fish per kg has not really shifted as the price of feed as, as is shifting they are not moving at the same pace now the feed prices yeah. are increasing but the cost of the fishes in terms of the kg sales is not increasing in the same pace with it. And it's affecting the whole farming and business of the farmer. Before you see a farmer who comfortably make like 50% return on investment if you are doing a large scale farm. For apparently now with the cost of you selling, you might not even get up to 30. Some, some parents, farmers are going praying to get back the money they even invested in the business. So with what the aquabed feed is doing apparently now with the, cost of feeding it's amazing now like, uh, like I, I was in uh, anambra state for time and i saw the aqua bear feed they were like wow we have gotten to this uh, place so it's something that is growing and uh, it's a nice one for the whole uh, aquaculture business because exactly. one thing you know one thing about the cartridge farm business is not it's not a competition business the complementing business why because it's a broad business, and only one person can't solve the needs of the farm. Mm -hmm. that, if aqua bear farms are the only people producing feed in Nigeria, they will worry aqua bear feed farms out because you can't meet the, the needs. Even in a state, let's say in maybe a state like Portacos, you can't just meet the needs of farmers in terms of feed production. So mm -hmm. the same thing in terms of the one farmer can't produce a feed that can feed just a state. Exactly. Like, look at the statistics. The farmers we have in Nigeria are not producing the capacity needed to feed Nigeria, the feed consumption rates for Nigeria alone. So we are still on a, a shortfall. And this also, Nigeria said we are the highest producers of catfish. If we go to other African countries, sometimes I have calls, you see some people calling you from Cameroon, Ghana, and they'll be telling you, ah, how can we get the machines or how can we get locally produced feed down to their country? So... We, we see the aqua bear feed moving not just in Nigeria to maybe different parts of the African countries. We have Ghana, we have uh, Cameroon, we have different countries around that are also in need of the feed production that aqua bear feeds are doing. So before we shut down, we want to you talk about okay, the aqua bear feed, where the, their factory located, how can someone that wants to locate this feed? So most persons want, okay, I want to buy feed from aqua bear feed, how do I locate? The aqua bear feeds and how do I maybe make purchase or make my order from them? Okay. Um, when we when we started, our takeoff point was uh, from Abia State, uh, somewhere in Osisiama. 
And uh, along the line, we had an expansion and we moved it across to River State in Port Harcourt. And uh, over time, we've been able to get branches all over Nigeria, not in every part of Nigeria, but at least in most major cities in Nigeria, you can be able to get or shop our fish in particular stores. Like we have an office, um, we have a store, a shop outlet in Port Harcourt. We have distributors in Port Harcourt. We have shop outlets in Aba. Of course, we also have distributor in Aba. And uh, we have uh, shop outlets in Owere. We have in, uh, I think we have in Iyala. We also have in uh, Ugeli. We have in Wari. We have in Benin. We have in Lagos. We have in Soka. We have in uh, Ikom. You know, so it's like we have uh, people who have gotten our products and who are helping us to restore, uh, resell the brand in so many different locations in Nigeria. So normally, uh, uh, we also have marketers who are also pushing the brand and. Uh, mm. Sometimes most of these marketers, they're not very, very uh, obvious to the brand because they're all in their you know, respective regions doing their own thing there. But then I happen to be the face of the brand. So for anyone or any distributor, any farmer who wants to get the Aquabell Fish Feed brand, all they have to do is just to call me or to WhatsApp me. Yes, we have a Facebook page, which is the Aquabell Fish Feed. It's a group on Facebook. You can easily... Uh, get all of our contacts from there on Facebook, or you can check up Belinda Bimbelli's profile on on Facebook, and you'll be able to get certain uh, you know informations uh, that that you need. And uh, another thing is uh, our numbers is always displayed; it's very very accessible. And we're also accessible on Google. If you just uh, type Apple Fish Feed" on Google, you get our contacts and you get most information about us. So actually. To make that order for Aquabell Fish Feed, either to call, you can either call or WhatsApp 090-391-47574. I will take that number again, 090-391-47574. So when you take it and you uh, put a call across to us in whichever location you are, we'll get your fees delivered across to you. Even as you're speaking at the moment, we have a feed uh, which runs into hundreds of parts that is on its way going to Ijebode. And I think uh, two weeks ago, we also made same delivery again to Ijebode. You know, and so many other locations in Nigeria, we've been able to distribute our fish to uh, Oka and so many other locations, and Suka and all the rest of them. So the output has been very, very amazing. And I want to use this opportunity to appreciate my Customers, uh, they've been very, very amazing. And most times they'll call me, they'll be like, ah, Belinda, send me fees and all the rest of them, you know. So it's like sometimes, like I say, sometimes we're not even to, able to meet up their order. That's why we're like getting, yes, we're getting new machines. Uh, we're getting like two more new machines to be able to incorporate and uh, be able to, you know, produce this fee so that it will get across to farmers who actually, actually, actually need it. So that's just it. If you happen to be in any of these cities I mentioned before and you want to show up our fees, all you just have to do is uh, hit me up by my WhatsApp number I, I called earlier. I will text you the address of where our branch is in any of the locations that you are. Yeah, so, so thank you. So for those that want to get the Aquabay feed, like we've heard, now the quality, in terms of the quality, the Aquabay feed meets the demand. Yes, it's also a local producing feed as all the local feed we have here in Nigeria. Now, one thing about in the feed business, if a farmer uses a product and it's not adequate, you know, one thing about a fish, if you use a feed for them and the feed does not give them a good output to show on the fish's body, you know, it does not exactly. die. It's something that once you feed them, if it's a feed that is not palatable, they won't eat it. Now, the next step, like, even if they try eating it, once you put them on the scale to weigh them, you, you notice that you've you are getting fish that almost foremost and their weight is like 200 grams because the feed, the feed they are using are not adequate for them. So for the high demand that is coming for the alcohol feed, you can uh, say that, yes, they are doing a good work because of the progress. So and it's a nice one having a lot of persons venturing into these areas in the cartridge business. Now, I've said it in, on this channel about the different value chain in the cartridge business. Now, we have different value chain. We have the people that do the hash ray, now, the, the, the breeders, we have those that do the grow out. They take the fish to table size. The one that, those that do the smoking fish, we have those that produce feed for themselves. 
So we have different value chains, even those that do the consultancy and trainings for persons that goes into the, 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 the business. Now, sometimes I get messages on a daily basis. Ah, I watch your YouTube channel video and people are doing an amazing job. So now, even pond construction also is also a value chain in the cartesian business. And no one farmer can do all this. You don't really have the time to meet all the demand in this business. So that's why it's an amazing business. You can come in and just pick a niche and do it excellently well. And you see people will recommend you. Are, these persons are doing a very nice work in the business. So it's a nice one having persons coming into the business and also having youths coming into the business, young persons doing a farming mm. business. And time passed. When you talk about farmers, you just you just pick people with gold, cutlass, people looking tattered. But now, if you talk about the farmers, there are people using, there are slave, slave farmers now. If you, if I, if I, <laughs> the last live uh, stream I have, which was a farmer, she is in South Africa. So if you see her, sometimes you are featured on uh, Twitter, you'll be like, this person is not even, really, it should not be a farmer because the, the narrative is changing gradually. Yes, people are seeing that, yes, I can be a banker and I, I can even be a farmer. When they tell you who are, you say, I'm a farmer. You, you are not proud of telling people, see, I'm a farmer, because you are solving a, a, a major need in terms of the whole. Because without a farmer, there is no future. Now, exactly. the managing director of this, uh, Femi Adesina was talking about Afri, uh, this African bank, agricultural bank, he was saying that the farmers are the next billionaires in Africa. Yeah, because this is, the, on the daily basis, people eat. Like today, you see, everybody has eating something today. So this is a, it's an area whereby everyone is encouraged to move into. So it's a nice one having you, uh, Belinda, being in the, in the channel. I know we'll still see more of you in, in more of our live uh, stream. And hopefully we'll be visiting. Thank God you say you have a place in Port Harcourt. Whenever we're free, I'm still in Port Harcourt for now. I would give you a call. And if you're in Port Harcourt, you'll come to the, station, uh, to the factory and we'll see the work that is going on. So it's a nice one having you on the channel today. So thank you very much. So I don't know if we have a word before we shut down for tonight, this evening. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, uh, Kenneth, for having me as a guest on this show. I'm really, really super duper grateful. And uh, thank you to all the viewers who are watching from every part of the world. Thank you so much and uh, God bless. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much. Have a, have a wonderful weekend. Yes, you too. Bye.